What's up, everybody? Mike here, and welcome to the Game News of the Week. Got plenty to talk about from a Capcom dev leaving the company. It's Suno had posted on Twitter about this. He has left the company and goes over details about that. And he's basically left to kind of start his own, I guess, new project of sorts. So I have my theories on why he possibly left. So I'll go into that. Also, Rocksteady has reported layoffs following Suicide Squad to just kill Justice League flop, basically, which honestly, it sucks, but it was kind of be expected because let's be real, kill the Justice League, it, it flopped hard. And then apparently Anotria devs are having issues with Xbox because the version, the Xbox version, I guess has been delayed or something going on with that, some issues going on here, but I think they've been resolved. And Black Myth Wukong has some new details about a DLC expansion before any sequel. And now it's officially confirmed about some, you know, some Hogwarts legacy news, you know, future uh, stuff with that series and franchise to go into. So strap yourselves in for this one. Let's do it. Hideaki Itsuno says goodbye to Capcom after 30 years. And if you don't know who this is, he is the game director on Dragon's Dogma, as well as Dragon's Dogma 2 that came out earlier this year, and Devil May Cry 5, which came out, I believe, back in 2018. And he's chosen to part ways and start a new game elsewhere. The location is still unknown at this time. And he announces on uh, Twitter, doing a post here, basically at the end of August, August of 2024, I'll be leaving Capcom in three years and five months. Thank you for your long-term support of the games and characters I've been responsible for. Hope you will continue to support Capcom's games and characters. From September, I will start developing a new game in a new environment. I hope to create fun, beautiful games that are as memorable as or even more memorable than the ones I've created so far. Please stay tuned for my next creation. So he doesn't give an, like any real reason as to why he's leaving, you know, or sorry, has left Capcom. Uh, Cause he's already left at this point. Aside from obviously he wants to create a new game. It's not clear if he'll be going to an existing studio, for example, like a Square Enix or establish one of his own. What I think is possibly going on is maybe he doesn't want to keep like making Devil May Cry games and Dragon's Dogma type games. Like he kind of did what he wanted to do, I feel like in Dragon's Dogma 2, where he was limited with the technology at the time of Dragon's Dogma 1. And so with better technology, he basically made the Dragon's Dogma game he wanted to make in Dragon's Dogma 2. And then the same could be said for Devil May Cry 5 in a sense, where I think uh, someone comment this in the comments below if you know for sure. But I believe at one point he did say that Devil May Cry 5 was the end of the Sons of uh, Sparta series, basically, or that saga or whatever. So, and maybe Capcom was like, well, we want you to make a Devil May Cry 6. And he's like, no, I don't want to do that. And I believe he has also had opportunities to be an executive at least once, if not multiple times, but declined that. He's always wanted to stay being a game dev. So I get the vibes and feelings that maybe Capcom was like, we want you to stay making this certain type of game or franchise. And he wants to take a break from that and do something different, right? And Capcom was probably not letting him do that. So he's like, all right, well, then I'm leaving. That's just my speculation. I don't know for sure. We may never know the real reason. But either way, I wish him the best. And I look forward to whatever his next game will be. Moving on. So Rocksteady reportedly leaves off staff following Suicide Squad. Kill Just League flop. This is one of the uh, few big flops of this year. We recently just had Concord arguably, arguably be the worst flop of 2024 because that's being taken down uh so kill the justice league is i guess doing a little bit better in a sense but not by much the other one is skull and bones that's another big flop for this year but yeah so this is unfortunate i feel bad for people that got laid off like i hope they land on their feet somewhere and get new jobs and still can take care of their bills and families things like that but it looks like that anonymous employees told Eurogamer that the Rocksteady quality assurance team had been cut from 33 members to 15 with poor sales of Suicide Squad. Rocksteady management has allegedly acknowledged that product quality will take a hit as a result of the layoffs as remaining QA testers struggled to uphold the same standard as the team uh, once double in size. I mean, yeah, when you cut your staff down and expect the remaining number of staff to essentially do the same amount of work that they were doing before with you know the people that were that you like with the added help with the people just fired like no that's not gonna fly like you cannot expect the same results i'm sorry i just that's no like <laughs> you're fucking insane in my opinion 
if you want to if you want to expect and demand the same results you were getting from 33 people out of 15 no they're fucking stupid so yeah this sucks and the 18 staff members affected reportedly included junior employees and veteran team members who were at the studio for more than five years so this is bad they oof like i said hopefully hopefully they land on their feet and Warner Brothers Discovery, like, get your shit together, man. This is ridiculous. Some more crazy news and some controversy a little bit to talk about. So, Anotria, the last song developers were having some issues with Xbox because apparently the initial report was the Xbox version was delayed indefinitely because Xbox had ignored the Anotria devs like for like two months or so straight. I haven't said anything, nothing like that. So, they essentially made it public. I think IGN reported on it, or in other uh, sources reported on it. And I guess that essentially got Phil Spencer's attention and things like that to like act upon like, whoa, what? Oh no, we, we messed up. We need to address this. It looks like Phil Spencer and Microsoft have essentially resolved the issue. And the devs of No Trio last song have thanked Phil for this Microsoft because this is an upcoming indie souls like that's supposed to release later this month on September 19th. And originally it was only going to be on PS5 and PC until the Xbox issue got resolved now. So it looks like it is going to be coming to Xbox Series X and S. And this is just like another story of the many stories of how Xbox seems to keep just dropping a ball. Like Black Man Kong has been delayed on Xbox. And they I don't know what's going on with that, where they keep being wishy-washy about the real reason. Uh, you know, once you know, the, the game science is trying to say that it's because of optimization issues then xbox is trying to say it's because that they got a exclusivity deal of sony but it has been officially publicly you know made or announced and i don't know it's just it's a bunch of he said she said kind of bullshit going on and i hate when this stuff happens so there's no release date yet for the xbox version of anotria uh the last song but at least you know progress has been made and they are working with xbox to get the xbox version out as soon as possible and phil spencer even apologized to the devs for this as he should you know because i mean like i don't know if he's fully responsible but i know since he's the head of xbox and went on to ceo it pretty much falls to him because or people are going to look at him as like oh you're the one to blame because you're the top guy in charge you're leading all these different teams and you know whatnot of your organization when it comes to your department so yeah like it kind of sucks when like a lot of companies do that in a way even though he's maybe not necessarily directly responsible or it's not maybe directly his fault in some of these cases when it comes to stuff, but you definitely got to lead by example. You got to make sure your teams are doing what they're supposed to be doing regardless and, you know, keeping good communication and things like that when it comes to these business deals and getting games on your platform. So I don't know. Hopefully they do better. Hopefully they do better, but it's been crazy. I know Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection, I think is now going to be officially has been officially confirmed to come to Xbox. Usually that wasn't. So they got that squared away too this is wild that xbox keeps having this you know weird issue with getting these games that are coming to pc and so uh playstation but for whatever reason they're having an issue trying to bring it to their platform for whatever reason i don't know and like you don't want to keep letting sony get these free exclusives type of stuff going on you don't like you need to be competitive still but sadly i think they've just kind of be are becoming more and more of a third big third party because they're dropping their, more and more of their games on PlayStation now. So I don't know. Xbox isn't what it used to be, sadly. And going back into what I'm kind of mentioning about Black Mufu Kong, because that's kind of the next thing here. So there's some positive stuff, and hopefully it's clar clarification here. But like I said, uh, Microsoft clarifies that platform limitations are behind Black Myth Wu Kong's Xbox delay. So uh, Microsoft has spoken out and made it clear there's no technical issues preventing the game sciences game from being on its console, hinting that there might be an agreement with PlayStation basically. And this has been a very successful game. Like the other, the other positive I was going to talk about here with this is that black and Fukong phone El is basically phone Elden Ring's lead with DLC expansion for any sequel. And uh, so there might be like an open world type of like DLC expansion and black and Fukong is sold even more. I think it's like sold 800 million. And it only took 70 million to make it, I believe. So it's more than made up for like, you know, the cost of development or yeah, 700 million figures actually dated to August 30th. And now that, and now black and Kong is around 800 million. Yeah. So it is doing fantastic. I can see this being nominated for game of the year. I don't know if it'll win game of the year. Personally, I think that's still going to be FF7 rebirth or possibly 
Astrobot, which just dropped because Astrobot is getting universally praised as well. And I hope to get that soon and check it out. So like I mentioned before, Xbox trying to say it's not because of technical limitations or issues. They're trying to hint and suggest that there's some type of agreement deal with game science and Sony when it comes to PlayStation. But this is still kind of speculation to a degree. Like this statement from Microsoft comes after several games have not been released on Xbox too, but have been on PS5 leading to all sorts of speculation, like with the whole Anotria situation. But even though that's been clarified, and like I said, Marvel's Capcom Fighting Collection originally wasn't like announced to come become the Xbox, but now it is basically. So I don't know what's going on here. They need to get together, like figure out what the heck you're trying to do here. And then lastly, Warner Brothers confirms Hogwarts Legacy 2, the you know famous and popular and very successful Hogwarts Legacy game came out I think back in 2022. You know, to a lot of people's praise basically over overall. You know, there was still that, you know, minority that was trying to make it controversial over certain things. I'm not going to get into here, but you, if you know, you know, and, uh, fans won't have to wait too long to enjoy it as they expect to release it within a, within a couple of years. So it could arrive as early as 2026, which kind of sucks. It, it goes back to the whole, like, we got to wait by, like four, four to five years, almost half a decade for these new, like sequels or games or not, because Hogwarts Legacy came out in what, 2022. So we're going to get the sequel four years later. And it kind of sucks. I wish we can go back to the days of where game development only took like two to three years. Like, I love that. Uh, I love that. But nope, nope. Everything's got to look more better visually and this and that and 4K and all this other crap. And like, but regardless of that, I am still excited for a sequel to this game. I just hope they don't make it live. Cersei, please learn from Suicide Squad. Please learn from your other games that you've turned to live service type crap. Do not make Hogwarts Legacy 2 a, a live service game when it clearly can be successful and sell very well as a single player game because you sold a shit ton of copies. All right, please don't do that. Make it a good freaking game and people will buy it. Okay, please. <laughs> but that's all I got for today, guys. Tell me what you think in the comments below about this news. You know, are you excited for some of it? Are you ha unhappy about some of the stuff? I know the layoffs of Rocksteady and the whole Microsoft stuff with Black and Fu Kong and Anotria is kind of wild. Uh, I'm excited for Hogwarts Legacy 2. Are you excited for Hogwarts Legacy 2? Uh, it kind of sucks that Itsuno is no longer Capcom, but at the same time, it's, it's cool and exciting what he could maybe be making next. So, yeah, sound off in the comments below what you think. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to check out links in the description below. If you want to go above and beyond by becoming a patron today, please consider doing so. There's some great perks there. And there's also YouTube memberships. Consider going that route as well, too. It helps support the channel and helps keep me going to make great content for you guys. So, yeah, my name is Mike. Thanks for watching.